Praising my Savior all the day long. For this is my story, and this is my song. Praising our Savior all the day long. Our Father and our God. We come before you this hour, O oh God, lifting up your name first, giving you praise, honor, and glory, even in the midst of sorrow, God. We come on today to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. Thank you, Lord, that you have allowed us to assemble on today. Thanking you, Lord, that your covering has been upon the Mays family. Thanking you, Lord, that you have given them traveling mercies from near and far to gather together to celebrate our brother's life, our father, our grandfather, our husband's life, God. We thank you on today. For every good and perfect gift, we thank you, God, for we realize and recognize that you don't make any mistakes. Oh, God, we thank you, God, how you have dispatched your angels of comfort to be around our family. We thank you, God, for a life well lived. We thank you, God, for a life well disciplined. We thank you, God, for a man of God who loved you first and his family second. We thank you, God, that even in this hour, even in this moment, God, that you're still showing up and you're still speaking. And so, God, we ask that you continue to surround the May family. 
in the name of Jesus. We ask that you continue to wrap your loving arms around his wife, Dolores, and his sons. And Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, Nate and Junior, oh, God, and Jonathan and their spouses. We ask, God, in the name of Jesus, that you be with the grandchildren, oh, God. We ask, God, in the name of Jesus. That you, God, be present. That after, Lord Jesus, the call stop, the visitation lessens, that they still feel the presence of you. Truly, God, we can say that this is his story and that this is his song. And may the family, God, find comfort in the words to the hem. May they find comfort in one another. May they find comfort from their home church, St. Matthew. May they find comfort in the people. May they find comfort, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And may God, when the day shall come, that they are able to turn their tears of sorrow into tears of joy as they reflect back on this great giant in their lives. That they'll recollect some things that will have them laugh and that they'll say or do some things, God, that will reflect back on Brother May. We thank you, God, for truly he was a gentleman's gentleman and he loved you. So we praise you. We lift up this prayer, God. that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Then Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? But Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father 
except through me. This is the word of God. It's already blessed. Amen. Colleagues of Brother May, in this order, 
Brother Michael Brown Sr., Brother John Clark, Brother H. Darrell Jones, Brother Robert McGrady, and Brother Javon Williams. Following their remarks, Sister Lori Tillis, one of the stewards of the church, will share correspondence and the church resolution. And then Brother Nathaniel May Jr. will come read the obituary, which you have already read. And then our choir will give us a selection in that order. Church, say amen. Good morning, St. Matthew Church, family and friends. Sister May, this May family, sons, their spouses, nephews, everybody connected with this family this week. Sorrow and yet joy that we greet you this morning to say goodbye to our dear brother, Nate. Nate May was a good brother. Member of the Sons of Allen, but before we were formally uh, established or formally got together, we always had a men's ministry at St. Matthew. It seems to have known Nate forever. But he came to this church with his family, and it was kind of about raising sons, raising these nephews, raising these boys that came through our church. Nate was one of our early babas in the rites of passage here at St. Matthew. Remember working closely with him over these years to make sure that we raised our young men our young boys, to be Christian, honorable men. And the guys used to get together uh, years ago. I guess I'm, oh gosh, time just kind of melts in. And, and But I guess maybe I would say a good 20 years ago or so, the guys used to get together on Monday night around 9 o'clock. We meet up at Star Tavern or, 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 or TG Fr TGI Fridays uh, to just fellowship and get together to talk about our church, what we could do to make it better. And uh, Nate was in that group. It was about six, seven, or eight of us we'd get together every Monday night, and we did it for about a year or so. But we would talk about the love of our church and, 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 and raising our families. Uh, uh, wives, we didn't talk about y'all too much, but we did talk about y'all spoiling these baby boys, okay? But, uh, but that's the kind of relationship that, that we had. Um, Nate was uh, such a good brother. He was always to me, Nate May. I always said it together, Nate May. And I was Brother Brown. But uh, we would uh, also get together and do shopping and, and, and do stuff for the church. Nate was um, a human GPS. There wasn't any place in Essex, uh, Passaic, or Union County that he didn't know how to get to and the, and the best route. But he, 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 was, he was just that kind of a good brother, never complaining. But then over the years, you know, health issues uh, uh, began to uh, become prevalent in our lives. And uh, Nate never complained. He was a tough old bird, never complained, and never was bitter. Never, I, I think about Job when I, you know, uh, when I think about Nate, never complained and did not blame it on God. He took everything in stride. But he had a good helpmate. Sister May is, uh, is a soldier. She is a strong woman. And she just kept things going for him. And we just uh, are going to miss having him 
in our midst and with us. But we love you, May family. And after this day, we're going to continue to check in on you and, and, and do what we can for you. Uh, God bless you. We love you. And we're going to miss Nate May. morning, church family, family and friends of Brother Nate May, an outstanding brother, brother whom I love dearly. We were very close. Uh, we served uh, on the board of stewards for uh, over 20 years together in this church. Uh, every time we had a steward board meeting, uh, I always managed to find a seat next to Brother May. And every time we sang, but the male chorus, I always managed to find a seat next to Brother May. Because he was a baritone, and I was a no-tone. <laughs> but his voice was strong enough to carry what I couldn't give forth in, in song. He was my friend, I mean, really my friend. We had a tremendous passion for sports. Brother May loved women's basketball. Loved it both professional and collegiate. And uh, I spent many uh, a year, for over 40 some years of my life, refereeing basketball. And so we developed a bond in that respect and I would call him and let him know, especially after the pandemic when he had trouble getting around. I would call him and let him know, hey, Brother May, uh, South Carolina's playing today on uh, such and such a time. Uh, you want to check it out? Because he loves South Carolina basketball and Aaliyah Boston. Aaliyah Boston dominated women's college basketball for three years, and he was a big Aaliyah Boston fan. And uh, I was a big Caitlin Clark fan because she, she can shoot like Seth Curry and lights out. Boy, lights out, but, but we, uh, and he was also very proud of his nephew who played at Penn State. I mean, when his son, nephew made the team at Penn State, boy, he, he had a glow about him. And we, and, and it's funny because I was a big, always a big Penn State fan because you could always see a good football game if Penn State was involved. And his nephew happened to play on a phenomenal team. And uh, he was so proud of his nephew. He was just a wonderful, had a wonderful spirit. He was so close with uh, brother uh, Jerome Dilley, Lewis Hill, Lacey Gibson. You could find the four of them after service on Sunday morning at the Maplewood Diner having breakfast. You didn't even have to wonder if they were there, they would be there. But uh, we're going to miss Brother May. We're going to miss him. But he, he's on his way home. In fact, he's already there. Because to be absent from the body is to be in the presence of the Lord. So rest on, my brother. Rest well. You may be gone, but you will never be forgotten. Good morning, greetings to the May family. Good morning, and greetings to my church family. So, as I usually say at every comedy show, I got good news and I got bad news. Good news is, I decided not to go with this speech I wrote, so y'all don't have to deal with that. And actually, uh, there is no bad news, so I was just trying to be funny, but anybody who knows me knows I have the world's worst sense of humor. So anyway, talk about May. I can't say much more than John and Michael already said, but I do have one small anecdote, and it, and it touches on, on basketball. So when I joined the Sons of Thunder, the male chorus, 20-ish years ago, uh, 
all the brothers really embraced me, but Nate was one of the first ones to embrace me, and we were getting to know each other, and we started talking about sports. And he told me about his love for basketball, particularly uh, women's basketball. And I said, well, you know, my idol in basketball, since I'm short, was a gentleman named Nate Tiny Archibald, okay? And they also used to refer to him as Nate the Skate. So every time I saw Brother May in the parking lot or if I saw him, even in the choir loft, I would, just, uh, especially at rehearsal, not during church, because Reverend Jackson was strict like that. So anyway, I would just holler, Nate the Skate, what's up, Skate? What's up, Skate? And to his credit, he never hit me in the mouth for calling him out of his name. And, and so I'm very thankful for that. And he just accepted the fact that I had given him this, like, crazy moniker. Um, and that just reinforces what was already said about just his calm nature, his, his godly way. And, you know, and we would talk about real things, and he would always bring it back to the Bible and, 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 and point me towards a Bible verse that dealt with whatever it was I was talking to him, however serious that was. And, you know, most of the brothers in this church, if not all of them, embody that same spirit. And I think that's why we come here, and that's why we flock to groups like Sons of Thunder and the Sons of Allen, because we have that common thing. We know we're not perfect. We know that we live in a country where people who look like us, particularly black males, are often persecuted and unlawfully arrested and beaten and all kind of heinous things. But we don't let that get us down. And because we got brothers like our honorary brother, John Clark, who may not necessarily look like us, but definitely one of us. And so we thank God for John Clark <laughs> as well. Uh, but there's nothing else I can say that you guys don't already know about Nate, other than what we all know that <laughs> I'm gonna miss him so much. <laughs> I'm gonna miss him so much. I can't, I can't even really verbalize it. But I do know, I do know that he's going home to glory. And I'm just so thankful that I got to meet him. And thank you, Dolores, for sharing him with us. Thank you. Good morning, church family, Dolores and family not easy. Nate and I met 1969 when we both came home from, uh, from the war and we went to Fort Bragg, North Carolina. That's where I met Nate. Uh, he was in a different barrack than I, so he wasn't really as close. To, we found out that we both were from Newark, New Jersey, and we promised to meet once we um, get out to service. Well, he got out ahead of me, so a month or so if I got out, I went to meet him, and we became the best of friends, inseparable. I couldn't have met a better brother. I couldn't. I, I, he was just there. He had that wick about him that if I had a bad day, he had that very distinctive laugh, <laughs> Rob, don't worry about it, man, let's go party. You know, that was, that was the mentality that we both had. We traveled together, we, we always did so many things. He was always there for me. When, my, when my, my, my mother passed, and we were trying to organize things, and he was there. I didn't even, I didn't even call him yet. He was there with my brothers, discussing what, we, what we we're going to do. Uh, I just, I just loved him. It was just so much I can say that my heart is not let me bring it out now. Uh, on, a, on a humorous part is when I came to pick Nate up at his little attic apartment, and we were supposed to go over to the village gate. And I said, Nate, are you ready? Yeah, <laughs> Rob, no, I'm not going to make it. I said, what do you mean? We got tickets. I'm not, he said, I, I can't make it because something came up. I said, okay. So then... I heard some rumbling in the back room. It was Dolores. <laughs> I said, okay, I understand. I understand. <laughs> and the rest was history, as you see. 
<laughs> but they was they were just <laughs> sorry the <to> Lord. <laughs> but I, I just thank God for him. You know, it was, it was just a blessing. It was just a blessing. Then I, I can't say Nate is my best friend. Nate is my brother. He's beyond best friends. He is, he was my brother, and he treated we treat each other like brothers. And I'm gonna miss him. I I I really am. And Dolores, I don't have to tell you if you need anything because you know that already. God bless you all. Church family, 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 church family is pretty much in its wine. I'm about to tell y'all the story real quick. Uh, I started going here with one of my um, elementary school friends, and uh, my mother found out that this was a AME church, so she just made me start going. Like, wake up, like, try to go to sleep Sunday, and she'd be like, nah, get up, you're going to church. So I started going, and I was in everything, choir, usher, did everything, and um the programs I was in, Nate and Dolores would come. So from there, I think I was like 16, 17, started feeling myself, stopped going to church. They picked up where I left off, and uh, they were here. Then Pal, John, they came in, and uh, just, a lot of, just a lot of good times. So the main thing I just want to have or say to y'all is, um, you know, I, don't, I see a lot of glassy eyes, a lot of tears, um, hear a lot of crying. Um, I really want y'all just to reflect on the good times because that's what he was. Um, he just liked the good times. Like he was just, a, I heard somebody say, stand up brother. And you knew where he stood with you straight up. And uh, <laughs> he, uh, we, we talked a lot about, we, we talked a lot about uh, <clears throat> like where um, he stood, where he stood in life and one of the things we would always talk about is when um, we were about four years old as babies around him on a regular basis, we get anything we want. But uh, when we got four years old, this was the age that pal, John and myself um, agreed upon was the age when he'd be like, you'd be like, yeah, I want to go to McDonald's. He'd be like, you got a job? That's when he hit. <laughs> So that's when he hit me with it because I was four years old and it stunned me because I was real gullible at four years old. So I'm like, hold up, I'm supposed to have a job and play with my toys and go outside. Where, where do I fit all of that in? But but he was just he was just a, a person and one of the verses that really sticks out to me with him is and I'm not gonna I'm, I'm gonna butcher it because he wasn't a person about if you knew the verse he was about if you do the meaning of the verse so one that um um epitomizes him is to say if you got a fish you could feed a person but if you teach a person how to fish then you could feed a person for life and that's what he did that's what he did for us he taught us how to fish and he turned Dolores into Dolores was the sweet Dolores was the only person in my corner when I was a little kid my mother would be it would my, my mother and him was like puffing big because he he's he 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 get on me and my mother be like yeah take that take that so she was my only but as, as time went on she became a strong person and that became my soldier she was my soldier when 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 my mom passed away and uh, I just, I just want to reflect on all the good times. And you know, from four years old um, to like probably like 14, 15, um, none of us really liked him too much. Four years old, he stunned me with the yeah, go get a job. And then about eight years old, long division came about. He come through the house with his TV guy after work and just sit at the table while I'm doing homework. I try to get out. I tried to get out so real before, for real before he got there, but then he'd come along and say, uh, yeah, Jay, let me see that homework. Erase everything and make me do it over. I'm trying to go outside before the street lights come on, and it, 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 didn't, it, it, it didn't happen. So anytime I saw that blue Granada parked outside, I'm like, dad. And that went on from long division all the way up to algebra. I was just, I was just hit. But, but, but what did it do? 
I got a I, I got a, a bachelor's of science in accounting. So such is life. I fell into insurance, not by them, on my own volition. So I just want y'all to reflect because I'm sure each and every one of y'all have your own personal story on the good things that he imparted upon y'all. And I just want to make sure that y'all keep that in mind. Good morning, St. Matthew, the May family. I have to tell you, once I heard the news, every time I turn around, I think I'm going to turn around and say, I am a living testimony because truly that was Brother May. We have a letter from Bishop Reg Reginald T. Jackson. Dear Mrs. May and family, Christy, Regina, and Seth join me in extending our sympathy to you on the passing of your husband, father, and loved one, Brother Nathaniel May. What a wonderful man Nate May was. His joining St. Matthew Church was a blessing to the church and the congregation. He brought with him a wonderful family who became our friends and family, as well as servants of God and his church. Nate May had a wonderful spirit. He loved God, his church, and the St. Matthew Church family. He did and gave his best. St. Matthew was better because Nate May was a part of it. For many years, he served as a member of the steward board, the highest position a lay member can hold in the local church. He was also a member of the Sons of Thunder and sang with passion and joy. He was a faithful attendee of the Bible study class. Brother May did whatever he could for God and his church. Additionally, Nate May was my friend. Together, every year, we would go and get Christmas tree for the church and our houses. We would also talk and laugh about so many other things. Going in the world, we talked about men's and women's basketball, football, politics, and other things. Brother May had a great sense of humor, personality, and was a lot of fun. I pray that God will comfort you in the loss, fill the void in your lives, and give you his peace. May you be comforted and encouraged as you believe God's word and trust his promises. Finally, be reminded that as God has brought this day of separation, he has promised a day of reunion where we will see again and those we have loved and lost never to part again. All God's best, yours and his, Reverend Reginald T. Jackson, Bishop. Resolution for Brother Nathaniel May. Whereas Brother Nathaniel May joined St. Matthew African Methodist Episcopal Church in October of 1996, and whereas he served St. Matthew as a class leader of class number 15, and whereas he served on the Board of Stewards, and whereas he served on the van ministry as a van driver, and whereas he served on the mail course and the flower ministry, and whereas, while in good health, he was consistent in his attendance at worship. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the pastor, officer, and member of St. Matthew African Methodist Episcopal Church family thanks God for the life of Brother Nathaniel May. We extend our deepest sympathy to his family. We earnestly pray that God will comfort the family in this transition and fill the void in their lives. We also pray that God's grace will strengthen the family and meet your personal need as you face and overcome the days ahead. Be it finally resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy become a part of the permanent records of St. Matthew African Methodist Episcopal Church, Orange, New Jersey done by the order of the official board of St. Matthew African Methodist Episcopal Church this 29th day of June in the year of our Lord, 2023. Sister Veronica Morton, Secretary, Reverend Melvin E. Wilson, Pastor Teacher. New Beginning Congregational Church to Sister Dolores Green May and family from Reverend Josephine P. Richardson and New Beginning Congregational Church family. 
I will wait all my appointed time until my change come. Servant of God, well done. Rest from thy love and employ. The battle has been fought, the victory won. Enter into thy master's joy. Please accept our heartfelt condolences. Words cannot begin to express the sadness you are feeling right now, but we are praying for you to get through this. Contrary to what you would have liked, Brother May has taken an early flight, but we still share a common destination. His race ended earlier than we anticipated, but we still have our race to run. We say he has departed, but God say he has arrived. Brother May is not dead, but only resting. For we know that death is only a stepping stone to a land that is filled with peace and harmony, a land where everything is renewed. It is sweet to know that his name has been added to the eternal book of life. May our Lord bless and comfort you during this time of grief. After the tears have dried and the goodbyes have been said, hold on to the happy memories you shared with Brother May. This will keep him alive in your hearts and mind. He will continue to live on through you. Ring out the welcome, swing wide the gates. Choirs of angels stand and sing amazing grace. There's one more soldier of the king whose trials are past. Ring out the welcome loud and clear. He's home at last. Reverend Josephine P. P. Richardson, pastor and New Beginning Congregational Church family. We love you. We have another resolution from Camp Wisdom United Methodist Church. Reverend Lesta E. Anderson, senior pastor. Resolution in loving memory of the family of Mr. Nathaniel May. Weep not for me. Weep not for me, though I have gone into the gentle night. Grieve if you will, but not for long upon my soul's sweet flight. I am at peace, my soul's at rest. There is no need for tears, for with your love I was so blessed. For all those many years there is no pain. I will suffer not, the fear is not all gone. Put now these things out of your thoughts, in your memory I live on. Remember not my fight for breath. Remember not the strife. Please do not dwell upon my death, but celebrate my life, author unknown. At this time of sorrow, may these truths sustain you. Your loved one will always be as close as a memory, and the God of all comfort will always be as close as a prayer. Whereas a faithful soldier in this journey known as life, your loved one knew that we are placed in this world for a limited time. He knew that this world is not our home. He knew that we are just passing through on our way to our mansion that God has prepared for us. We celebrate with you this earthly life and rejoice with you a new heavenly address. Whereas we, the members of Camp Wisdom United Methodist Church, want the family to know that our hearts and prayers are with you today as you gather to say a Christian goodbye to your beloved brother, husband, father, grandfather, uncle, and friend. Whereas it is always all right to be sad, to mourn, and even to cry, God reminded us in his inspired book of Matthew that blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Also remember that in the book of Psalms we read, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Whereas, the home going of your beloved Nicholas May is the will of God. We know that a human connection has been broken and that your hearts will bleed with agony and pain. Be encouraged in the words of God. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Therefore, be it resolved that we love you, Rosetta and Sarah, and know that we are praying for you to the entire family of Mr. Nicholas May. Please know that on behalf of the entire Camp Wisdom United Methodist Church, membership, we extend to you our loving and heartfelt sympathy. We also assure you that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Remember, God loves each of you. To Rosetta and Sarah and his entire great family, our powdering word is this, be encouraged, do not lose heart. Fix your eyes on the eternal. God bless you. Finally, be it resolved, that a copy of this resolution is being placed in the record of the church and that a copy will be given to the family. Humbly submitted this 29th day of June, 2023, Camp Wisdom United Methodist 
Church, Reverend Lessa E. Anderson, Pastor, Reverend Billy Lane, Associate Pastor. Good morning. Aunt Ness, I just want you to know uh, the orator in me is about to step out. I am not going to read this word for word. Um, I already got approval from my mama, so I'm going to kind of touch on his life story, but I'm going to kind of go down this winding road, so just ride with me. My dad was born July 19th, 1947. Uh, to James May Sr., Ella May, Cherry May, in Selma, Alabama. Um, he passed away on June 19th, 2023, at Cooperman's uh, Barnabas Medical Center up in Livingston. Uh, he received an education from Dallas County School District, graduated from Tipton High School in Selma, Alabama, uh, and then he moved to Newark. And then when he moved to Newark in 66, he wound up going into the Army and uh, was, I want to say, enlisted in 67. Uh, that's where he met Rob. Uh, he was there, did what he had to do. He was discharged during Vietnam, went to Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Uh, he relocated to Newark, and he attended Essex County College. Now, Jay, I don't know if you know this, but when he was in school, he didn't go to school for business administration. He went to school for engineering got through all the classes and I said, dad, why you got all these engineering books in this closet? And he said, well, at the time, I liked math. He said, I got to the last class and realized I didn't like math anymore. So he decided to just change degrees and wound up getting a bachelor's and a master's in business administration. Uh, he retired from Allstate worked there for 34 years. I want to say he was the first African-American claims adjuster in America. Um, he probably is also the first man who didn't have to be to work till nine, but was there at five o'clock and did all of his work before seven o'clock and just relaxed the rest of the day. I remember he took me to work with him one time and I said, why are we here this early? He said, just sit down and just relax. I said, I'm going to go to sleep. It is 5.30. And he just finished by 7. He was like, all right, now what you want to do? I said, you got any more work to do? He said, no, we're going to lunch. So he would take me to the Friendlies. I can't remember where office it was, Ma, but you know what I'm talking about. There was a Friendlies and a Chili's, Bloomfield Ave. And he would go there every afternoon. He would order the same thing. He would tell me, this is the best Friendlies you could possibly go to. And then, Jay, I would ask for some ice cream, and he would tell me, you got money for that? I learned quickly, just like John did, you better have half the money if you want to get what you want. But he worked at Allstate for 34 years and um, did a pretty good job, I would say. And he married my mom, Dolores, from down in Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, they had me. They should have stopped. I love you, John. I love you. They brought John along some years later, and we also adopted Malachi. Um, the reason my dad is at St. Matthew is because of Javon and my auntie. Jay would get on that church van. It was white. You get on that white, the brown church van, and he was coming to youth choir. And I remember I met Miss uh, Aunt Vanessa, and she said. You know, you come all the time with him. Why don't you just keep just coming? And I was like, all right. And eventually, the more I, more I started to come, my mom was like, why you keep going over there? I said, well, Ma, they got kids over there. They don't have kids at your church. So I'm going to go where the kids are. And I, we never left. So my dad has been here, and he joined in 96. Um, but he was at every single program. Uh, he became a steward, a class leader, Sons of Thunder, Sons of Allen, and gentlemen, I love y'all, because I know my dad loves y'all. 
I want to say the best trip we ever took was when we went to Toronto with Aunt Sandy. And he always talked about it because he always talked about the camaraderie that y'all showed when y'all were on those buses and when y'all were singing at every single church. So I appreciate all of y'all. He joined the flower ministry, Boy Scouts, was a troop leader. And what's crazy is I always used to tell my mama, I said, Dad's a troop leader and we're not even in the Boy Scouts. <laughs> but that was his dedication to just helping people. As Jay said, my dad would rather teach you how to do something so that you could go on and do it yourself. One thing I will tell you is, even my brother and I have been talking about it all week, my dad found humor in everything. It didn't matter what it was, he would always find a way to make you laugh. And he would go, ha, 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 But um, if you got to know my dad, there were two things he was really good at. Crossword puzzles. He'd be sitting there, he could do the New York Times and the Star Ledger crossword puzzle in no time you'd have no no you wouldn't understand what he was doing he would just sit there and go what's a seven letter word for a Greek sandwich and you just look at him and he was like never mind I don't, don't even tell me I already got it he put it down but what you don't know if you ever been to my house and you sat with him is he knew every answer on Jeopardy I'm I'm he probably is the one person that could have beat Ken Jennings. And I put money on it because my dad, and I, I told my wife, I said, watch this, he's going to say all the answers. He's sitting there, he wouldn't even look at the TV. Oh, oh, Alexander the Great. he just said all the answers. And it was just real cool to watch. But even now, I remember him when I watched Jeopardy. And my wife will tell you, I just know random facts about nothing. But for no, my brother, we talk about it, no reason, but it's because we watch probably every episode of Jeopardy. Uh, but he was a he was a huge Giants fan. I'll never forget it. One time he worked, he was at Allstate, and during the time when the Giants were winning the Super Bowl, Otis Anderson walked in. And Otis Anderson was like, how you doing, Nate? And I'm looking, my mouth is wide open. I'm like, Dad, you know who that is? Oh, like, yeah, that's old Otis over there. Just servicing cars, doing his job, didn't worry about who he was, but he was still a fan. But he was one of the biggest Giants fans, and I, I apologize because I just still don't understand why. <laughs> to, this, to this day. And he loved girls basketball, uh, which is the reason why I'm a girls basketball coach. You know, I just, his love for girls basketball translated to me, so they always ask me, you gonna come over and coach the boys? No, I'm good. These girls over here are all right with me. They actually listen. <laughs> uh, he was preceded in death by my Auntie Betty, his brother-in-law, JC, uh, his mom, Ella May, his father, James May, uh, his brothers, Mac and Joe, and his aunts, um, Lina and Jesse. Um, but he's going to leave a lot of family behind. But I know he's going to a better place. Um, I came about two weeks ago and I told my wife, I said, my dad keeps talking about he wants to go home. And I said, Ma, he's not talking about coming back to the house. I said, he's talking about going home, home. She's like, no. I said, no. Dad was very straight to the point his whole life. And if he said it, he meant it. And he told you he was ready to go home, and you see, he's on his way. But he's preceded by myself, my family, my brother, his family, uh, Malachi, and eventually with your family, and all the grandchildren. Uh, they're running around here somewhere. Um, my grandma, Mary, my uncle, uh, Ali, brother-in-law, Javon, James, Mary, his sisters, Tom, Sarah, Rose, and a whole bunch of nieces and nephews and cousins and friends. But I just want to say thank you to all you who came out. I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. 
uh, they always say, when you have a funeral, you never know who's going to show up. And I appreciate all of you showing up for my dad because it shows all those crazy lessons he talked to us about John. They, they stuck. And uh, he was a good dude. He was a good dude. And I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Y'all know this one, so let's sing it together. Y'all know it. Say amen. amen. All I got to say, Brother Nate, is that us Giants fans are on the come up. Right. 
Now God bless the food we are about to receive for the nourishment of our bodies. Help us not to preach a good sermon, but a sermon that does some good. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me call your attention to the book, to the letter of Romans chapter 10. I want to draw some lines around verses 9 through 13. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13 say this in the New International Version. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame, for there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. <clears throat> Look at somebody close to you and ask them this question. Do you have Jesus? Look at somebody else, ask them, do you have Jesus? Two or three minutes with the help of the Holy Spirit, I want to preach from the subject, do you have Jesus? There are many reasons why this pastor and the people of St. Matthew are going to miss Brother Nathaniel May. We have missed seeing him sitting at the security desk on Sunday mornings as we enter the building. When I was first assigned as the pastor of St. Matthew five years ago, I remember walking in every Sunday morning and saying to myself, who is this man sitting at the security desk and why is he sitting there? I would eventually come to know that this was brother Nate May and him sitting at the security desk had little to do with him being a security presence, but more to do with him being able to read his paper and greet the saints who came in for worship. We miss his presence at the security desk. We're also going to miss him because he was a significant presence in the male chorus, also known as Boanerges in the Greek or the Sons of Thunder. He was one of the lead soloists in the choir and he will always be remembered for two musical testimonies that he gave. You've already heard them. Now, mind you, I don't think he nor the rest of us knew that he was offering a testimony at the time. But upon further review and reflection, they were clearly testimonies. Here are the words to one of his testimonies. You've already heard it. Glad I've got Jesus down in my heart. Glad I've got Jesus down in my heart, glad I've got Jesus down in my heart, glad I've got Jesus down in my heart. Then it would get a little good to him. He said, glad I've got a friend down in my heart, glad I've got a friend down in my heart, glad I've got a friend down in my heart, glad I've got Jesus in my heart, glad I've got peace down in my heart. Glad I've got peace down in my heart. Glad I've got peace down in my heart. Glad I've got Jesus in my heart. And in case you still didn't get it or didn't understand what he was saying, he would simplify it by saying, I've got Jesus. I've got Jesus. I've got Jesus. I wonder, can you help me say that I've got Jesus? Little did we know that when Brother Nate led that song that he was giving his testimony. He was saying that he was a man who had Jesus, who knew Jesus, who was acquainted with Jesus, who was related to Jesus. Brother Nate didn't just know about Jesus, which is the case with a lot of us. He knew Jesus. He knew him down in his heart, and he knew Jesus for himself. What an awesome testimony. 
But ladies and gentlemen, I came to highlight the fact that this was not just an awesome testimony. I think Brother Nate was also doing some covert evangelistic work at the same time. I believe that Brother Nate was saying, I've got Jesus. You need to have him too. This is at least a part of what Paul is saying to the Romans in the text. Paul takes this idea of having Jesus a step further by also telling the Romans how they can get Jesus. For those of you who follow this kind of information, the verses from this text constitute what is called the Romans Road. The Romans Road is the road map that delineates how any person can develop a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and be saved. Listen to what Paul says. He says, if you declare, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's how you get Jesus. I know that a lot of folks try to complicate the process of salvation and make it seem like it is such a difficult thing to develop a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. But I want to encourage somebody today to receive a simple message from a simple man who sang a simple song. You can and should have Jesus, not only in your head, but in your heart. Of all the wonderful things we have said and heard today about Brother Nate May, we should always remember him as a man who had Jesus down in his heart. What about you? Do you have Jesus? And do you have him down in your heart? I'm almost sure that a conversation about or an appeal for salvation to those who may not be saved is the last thing you expect to hear at a homegoing service. But when you think about it, ladies and gentlemen, what better place or what better time to hear this than here? You may not know it or believe it, but all of us have an eternal reservation that has no privilege of cancellation or postponement option. Like Brother Nate, all of us, whether we are conscious of it or not, are going to reach the moment when we cross the line from physical life to eternal life. The difference about this moment for those who are saved is that we know where we are going once we cross the bar. When Reverend Leslie and I were privileged to be in the hospital room with Brother Nate and members of his family on Father's Day, it was clear that Brother Nate's physical life was coming to an end. But thank God that Father's Day was not the end of his spiritual life. We even prayed that day, Lord, if you're going to take him, would you not take him today on Father's Day? And you know what? God heard and answered our prayer. God let Brother Nate live until 3.09 a.m. Monday morning. And on Monday morning, Brother Nate began his eternal life, which leads me to Brother Nate's second musical testimony. Remember, I said a minute ago that Brother Nate gave two musical testimonies. The first one was his statement that he had Jesus. <laughs> The second one is when he said that he was on his way home. Oh God. He would say, on my way home. Oh, on my way home. And then he'd say, fix it, Jesus. Fix it like you said you would. Then he'd say, fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Have you ever thought, ladies and gentlemen, what was Brother Nate? asking Jesus to fix. I think Brother Nate was asking Jesus to fix him and fix all of us so that we would be prepared for the moment when it was our turn to go home. Old folk used to say that heaven 
is a prepared place for a prepared people. Every moment that we live, y'all, is a moment closer to the moment that we die. So in a real sense, Brother Nate was right. All of us are on our way home. Uh, so Brother Nate, uh, get our rooms ready. <laughs> Brother Nate, uh, we look forward to seeing you singing solo in the heavenly choir. <laughs> Brother Nate, take your seat next to Peter at the security desk at the pearly gates. Uh, Brother Nate, uh, drive that van uh, all around heaven. Uh, Brother Nate, uh, get together with the other brothers. Uh, who have left here from this place. Uh, because you know what? All of us uh, are on our way home. Uh, shout it out. Some glad morning. Uh, when this life is over, I will fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I will. You will too. Uh, fly away. Anybody know I'll fly away. Oh, glory, I'll fly away when I die. Woo! Hallelujah! By and by, I will fly away. So do you have Jesus? What's your answer? Do you have him? And where is he? Down in my heart. Amen. Amen. And amen. Church, say amen. As we prepare for the committal service and the benediction, family will receive guests and visitors downstairs during this repass, it would be Brother Nate who really probably allows us the first formal repass that we've had since the pandemic. <laughs> it would be him, but certainly he is well deserving. Would you please stand? Y'all join me, please. Inasmuch as pleased Almighty God and his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased brother Nathaniel May Sr., we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose second coming in glorious majesty the earth and the sea shall give up their dead, and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body, whereby he is able to subdue all things and the mighty workings unto himself. I heard a voice from heaven say, Write from henceforth, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors and their works do follow them. All who know, let's repeat together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now may God the Father, God the Son, and God the blessed Holy Spirit rest food and abide with each and every one of us now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let us all say amen. amen. Those persons who have been designated as pallbearers, would you come and stand to my left, please? 
you will follow the ministers out behind Brother Nate's casket. All right, stand to my right. <laughs> Just move down a little bit, move down a little bit. Amen. Let us recess, allow the family and the pallbearers to come before you begin to move, please. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He that believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth. He shall stand upon the earth at the latter day. Even though these skin worms shall destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself. Celestial shore. I fly away singing. I 